Hello, Peculiar Family. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, I'm Stephanie, and I am just a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, sharing the gospel, sharing some, some truths in his word, and helping encourage believers in this crazy world that we're living in. So I have a really important uh, message today. Um, the deception is so thick and even Jesus warns us, see that you do not be deceived because many will come in my name. So how do we know, even as believers, that we're not deceived? Well, we need to think about how Satan operates in the world, right? So, Satan's gonna operate in two ways. He's going to operate blatantly, like we have people that literally are worshiping Satan, that are doing satanic things, and even the obvious person that knows good and evil are gonna say, oh, that's evil, let me stay away. But he also operates in stealth mode. He operates um, undercover. And this is important to understand what the difference between esoteric and exoteric. Okay, these two concepts, I'm going to read the definition of these in a moment. And this is another tool so we can um, learn how to, dis to discern. We discern everything through the lens of scripture. But when we can um, understand when it's just our own paranoia or if it's something we really need to be you know, uh, warned about, like in our spirit, because the deception is really, really heavy and thick. So let me just read to you for a moment the definitions of esoteric and exoteric so we can have a, a starting point. And a lot of people uh, are not familiar with these terms and, you know, I never really thought about them too much. I knew it was always that, you always heard like the esoteric hidden knowledge of the ancient Egyptians or things like that. So exoteric, um, here's a few different de definitions exoteric suitable to be imparted to the public without secrecy or other reserves so exo you think of like exos exoskeleton the outer skeleton of um, an insect that's the outer then there's the inner so esoteric intended for or likely to be understood by only a small number of people with a specialized knowledge or interest or an enlightened inner circle. We see a lot of that enlightenment going on right now in the new age, right? It's very esoteric, it's very hidden. Um, we're gonna get into all that in just a second. Another definition, exoteric, accessible, capable of being readily or fully comprehended or having an obvious application. Esoteric, having to do with concepts that are highly theoretical and without obvious practical application often with mystical or religious connotations. Exoteric, public or popular, having wide currency. Esoteric, conf confidential, private. Okay, so um, now that we understand those, uh, the difference between esoteric and exoteric, we can, we can apply this to basically everything that is happening in our world. So we know these basic concepts that right now Satan is ruling the world. He is the prince of the power of the air, the prince of the darkness. He is actually has reign and rule right now. The Bible tells us, okay, in God's infinite wisdom, this is how it's going. This is just the plan of salvation for humanity. But the Bible is a clear warning and tells us to prepare and how to prepare against the wiles of the devil. So now that we know that there is hidden wisdom and open public knowledge, then we have to discern the two. We can go into scripture and understand um, Jesus's ministry, and then we can see how Satan is operating. So I'm going to read just for a moment. The thing about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is imparted to believers once you believe the gospel, which is, that Christ died for us, died for our sins. It's free. This is not hidden wisdom. You see, another reason why when we know that God loves his children and just wants us to believe him, it's not hidden. It's open. 
think of how all of those esoteric religions operate. They, it's, it's very hidden, only the few know, and you've got to ascend to the high master. This is secret, hidden things that is, is of satanic origin and of the antichrist origin. Right there you can discern God gives open, free knowledge. It's in his word. He gave us his word. All we have to do is believe it and study it. There's nothing. We get secret uh, hidden nuggets. God says there's certain things that are hidden, but it's not that he's trying to trick us or, you know, go the satanic route like how Satan wants to, uh, uh, you know, deceive. God wants us to just believe everything's out in the open for, um, for people to just come, drink, come listen, come get. It's free, right? So here in John chapter 18, this is before Jesus was going to his death, where he was getting accused of blasphemy, um, you know, but Jesus, uh, I'll just read here in, chat, in uh, verse 19, the high priest then asked Jesus of his disciple and of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whether whether the Jews always resort and in secret have I said nothing. So they're trying to say that he's saying some secret things that are hidden from the government and hidden from, you know, uh, the people. But Jesus is saying everything that I'm saying, he spoke openly in public. Everyone that wanted to come in here, he spoke. There was nothing uh, secret except for remember Jesus had to go to the cross to atone for our sins. So there's certain things he had to keep quiet about, even though he spoke openly, not everybody understood the spiritual uh, things. The people that wanted to know his disciples and the people that were very curious would always ask Jesus questions and he would share the answers. And remember that just God's timing was perfect because not everybody could understand he was the true Messiah because Otherwise, how would he atone for our sins? No one would kill him if they knew he's the true Messiah. Again, these are things that are sometimes we just have to trust God that the way he did it was just the way he wanted to do it. And who are we to say, God, you should have not done it that way. So let's take a look at what is happening. Let's just take one thing. Let's look at the media. Now, we know that pretty much all the media is owned and operated by very, very small few. They uh, control both sides, the Hegelian dialectic, which means they are the uh, thesis and antithesis or antithesis. So they, they control both narratives. This way you uh, appear to have a choice. Like let's say you watch Fox News or you watch CNN or whatever it is that you are just really got to follow because they're the truth. The exoteric, what they show you, is what your ears want to hear. Oh, look at how bad they are. And oh, look at the, can you believe they're not standing up for righteousness? And, and yeah, okay, well, anyone could realize that these things are wrong. The average person knows right and wrong, right? But they're hiding the very true sources of the evil. You think they're coming out blatantly, showing like the satanic worship that's happening behind the scenes? Um, the child sacrifice, the things that are really going on in the deep uh, occult world. No, because that, that, that has to be hidden from the masses. Because if everyone really saw blatantly what was happening, they're probably, for the most part, I mean, there's a lot of really crazy, lazy people that would be like, oh, well, it's good for you. There would probably be an uproar. But Satan hides, hides and disguises his operations. He does it in the church as well. He has infiltrated many of the churches. And I'm gonna show you, just prove to you how the infiltration works. When we don't have our truth, throughout scripture, the Bible always talks, is about, talks about the word of God. Now, remember in the Old Testament, they had the holy scriptures. They were, um, or the, the oral word from God. This is how God spoke at that moment, you know, he, this was how the Bible was written. 
so they they uh, had the scriptures. That's why Jesus always says, "At is as is it is, is ugh, as it is written." He would refer back to the scriptures because prophecy was about him. So when we don't have a basis of truth, then we have anything goes. Thank God. The Lord has given us his holy word so we will not be deceived. It's all about a warning. Basically, the scriptures are basically God's love for us, the judgment for those that don't want to listen or disobey God, and also just the magnitude and the scandalous love of God, meaning he came to save sinners. How scandalous is that, right? He came for sinners, not the righteous, because the righteous already have... You know, they don't need God. They need their own righteousness. But us sinners that know that our, we come short, we just cry out to God. And it's just this beautiful free gift. So when we look at any operation, I'll give you another example. Freemasonry. Freemasonry, they operate in a pyramid. Uh, everything basically Satan operates is like a pyramid. The little capstone is the secret knowledge. Think of the Egyptians. They all have the secret knowledge. This is the esoteric, a satanic. It all comes from the same place. Mystery Babylon, Babylonian, um, all the ancient, ancient worship that God always tried to pull his people out of, right? He's saying, come to me that I'm going to show you the right way to do things. And they always want to go into that hidden secret wisdom. They think God's tricking them. That's Satan again. So Freemasonry, what they do is at the very top is Luciferian worship. The 32nd, 33 and above. Um, their God is Lucifer. But of course, you think they're going to tell the bottom of the pyramid that you're, okay, come on in, everyone. No, they, they show the exoteric, what the masses will think. You come in as a brotherly love. Yes, you're going to serve your neighbor. We've got children's hospitals built and look at the good things we're doing and it's brotherhood. But you got to pay a lot of money to get up the ladder. Remember, God's, it's free. It just takes your time to, to let the Holy Spirit, let the word come to you and go, you can go to any church. It's free, right? Get the knowledge of God. Um, all these other religions, the bottom of the pyramid is working in the exoteric. So, for example, the first level of the Freemason, you come in and you have to do some oaths and things like that, pay some dues. Then you, uh, you know, move up the ladder, move up the ladder. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're getting this little bit of wisdom that's hidden, you know, but still not quite the very, very core, the inner circle wisdom that's reserved for the very few it's kept very secret very secret so all you freemasons out there i'm so sorry you really got to go a little bit further and figure out what they're worshiping at the very highest level and you got to dig deep because you're not going to find it in many places go to albert pike morals and dogma he'll show you it's out there in the open okay sorry i had to uh my video went off so i had to clear some video space disk space Okay, so now that we know in the, la the last days there's going to be the apostate church, how do we know as Christians they're a church? They're, they seem like they have a form of godliness, but how do we know as Christians um, what is, uh, you know, Satan coming in to deceive and uh, what is truth? We must be studying the word of God ourselves so we can spot the false teachings, the false lies of Satan. Satan is always going to be worldly, fleshly, um, the fleshly desires of the world, like um, the false gospel of the prosperity gospel, live your best life here on earth. Um, Jesus always was speaking about the kingdom of heaven and not storing your treasures up here on earth. Again, doesn't mean that we're here to be like, you know, having our worst life ever here. But when our focus is on the things of the earth, we know that that is more of a worldly, fleshly view. Also, when you're focused so heavily on sin, what happened after the cross? Jesus finished the work of the redemptive process for all that believe. We are no longer living under the burden that the condemnation of our sin nature when we are in Christ because we're allowed to focus on 
his free gift and then we can operate freely in the kingdom meaning the condemnation of that heavy burden of sin is uh the lord has lightened that load for us that's what we have to believe so when someone is constantly and and persecuting others for their sin and focusing on the sin yeah we have a sin nature while we're here on earth but what happens after the rebirth bo being born again we start to focus on the fruits of the spirit and the things that the lord gives us with the holy spirit so our focus is not on the the burden the heavy condemnation of the sin because christ overcame that okay by his resurrection so when we see people constantly all they're talking about is how bad the sin the this that we're all aware of it god but we operate differently in the kingdom we are going to operate under the freedom in christ allowed to uh let the spirit work through us right there's times we're going to have to show people their um faults and their sins in the church done with a humble heart not this bashing going on on the internet which divides everything has an order that's why you need to understand what is the order in the word how does god show us how do the apostles um operate in the church there's a system and an order to that and we need to know that only through listening to scripture not listening to this youtube fanatic person that seems so right and so godly they might be right they might be wrong i don't know but you've got to test all the spirits you need to come yourself and do your work of testing these spirits letting the holy spirit through prayer and reading the word of god say is this spirit of the antichrist or is this the spirit of you and it can be sometimes really really deceptive because it appears to have that um satan appears as an angel of light he comes as something that could be good the exoteric but the esoteric will pull you fuller and f further away farther away from god and you won't even know it because you start to follow the things that are not um the uh the things that god wants you know from us as believers and one simple thing one measure before i go is really simple if your church is not preaching the gospel you don't hear the gospel which is we are sinners we are okay let me just give you the, the gospel in four two seconds we have a fallen nature because god originally created mankind you know adam and Eve perfectly but they decided to rebel against god that's how sin crept in the world that's why we have bad things happening we have earthquakes and horrible things happening and children dying young because we have a fallen sin nature but it's not the plan forever god will restore back to humanity after we have this knowledge of who he is and the plan that was done through the sacrifice of jesus christ he came down god came down from heaven lived as a man no sin in him that's how he became the sacrifice because sac there has to be a penalty for sin there has to be a penalty christ paid that penalty when we believe that the holy spirit indwells in us lives in us and then we can operate for the kingdom to share get other people away from this heavy burden that uh when we understand that in christ that we have um this is the gospel so the death burial and resurrection of our lord jesus christ for all that believe for all that believe right it's all through the scriptures uh in the new testament and um that's the gospel and when we when a church is not sharing the gospel often if not in every message listen listen to their words what are they saying are they talking about the good deeds all the time that they're doing or the earthly things those yes are good but what is the cause of our salvation and who should we be focusing on saving souls right getting people out of bondage okay and then of course there's the discipleship so what are they focused on most getting understanding having under people understand the gospel first and then the service afterwards or the service to enter the kingdom that's the difference I hope this blessed you. Let me know in the comments if it does. And be very weary when you're, you know, listening to anything, um, you know, in the world right now. Very deceptive. God bless you guys. And I'll see you in the next video.